Today I'm going to show you how to make my chickpea avocado salad. It's one of my favorite recipes because it's so easy and it's bursting with flavor. I make this recipe for my friends when they come over for lunch and it's perfect for a picnic. Let me show you. So if I had to compare this recipe to anything, I would say it's similar to a tuna salad, but instead of canned tuna, we're gonna use canned chickpeas. And the reason for that is because these have a nice meaty texture, and we're gonna mash some of them and then keep some of them whole. And that, in combination with all of these other flavorful ingredients, we're gonna have this creamy, savory, delicious salad. And my favorite way to eat it is to serve it in between toasted bread. So that's reason enough to make this salad. So let's get started. First up, we're gonna add one can of chickpeas that's been drained and rinsed. Now you can make your own chickpeas if you want, but it's gonna be that much quicker if you use canned. And we're gonna add a pinch of cayenne, we'll add a few cracks of black pepper, and a good amount of sea salt. Now we will add olives to this, so keep that in mind. Next up, a little nutritional yeast. It's gonna make this salad slightly nutty and cheesy in flavor. Now we're gonna mash the chickpeas. So we don't wanna mash this into hummus. We want, we want there to be a nice texture to it. So we're just gonna mash about half. And I like to add the um, spices before I mash because then we're kind of mashing them into the chickpeas. So once the mixture starts to look something like this, you're done mashing. Now we're going to season these mashed chickpeas to give them a whole bunch of flavor. And what we're going for is we're going for bright with the aromatics, such as the dill and the parsley. And then the olives are gonna give a real nice saltiness to the salad. And then for texture, we're gonna add crunchy celery, crunchy pickles, and the secret ingredient, Marcona almonds. So Marcona almonds are almonds that are different in texture than traditional almonds. They are super crunchy and they're very rich in flavor and they're one of my favorite nuts. And that's gonna be the secret weapon in this recipe. When people take a bite, they're gonna look at you and be like, what's in this? And you're gonna say, none of your business. Lastly, for another aromatic, we're gonna add sliced green onions. So the next most important step of this recipe is adding one clove of garlic. Now this clove of garlic, we need to transform it into a paste. And that way, it kind of melts into the salad and it gets dispersed evenly. We don't want you biting into a piece of garlic in this. That would be jarring and off-putting. So the trick to making this garlic paste is you need a nice big knife. It doesn't have to be quite this big, but the bigger the better. So we're gonna smush it. And then I like to add a little salt because this helps to break down the garlic. I'm gonna squish it one more time and then I'm gonna run my knife through it. Now I know they sell that jarred garlic, that jarred minced garlic, don't use that. Not for this recipe. Take the extra two minutes, use your muscles, and make your own garlic paste because this pungent paste is gonna give this salad the bite that it deserves. Okay, so if you look at it, it's become a paste. Okay, we are good. So you should be able to slide your knife across the cutting board and add it to the bowl. Now we're gonna add a little bit of shallot. We don't wanna add a whole shallot. We only wanna add about a tablespoon because this salad really only serves two to four people. 
And if you add too much shallot, it's gonna be just too much. With the shallot, we wanna mince it. It's okay to have little pieces. You don't want the pieces to be too large. So, one more go through. We'll add some celery. I like celery, it's my favorite vegetable. I'm gonna add half a cup, because I really like the crunch that it gives the salad. The celery has kind of a salty flavor. Now, this is a vegetable where I kind of want to keep it a rough chop because I want it, I want there to be nice big pieces of it floating around the salad. Dill pickles. So, I don't know if you guys had dill pickles in your tuna salad when you were a kid, but I had a babysitter named Miss Judy, and she taught me to put dill pickles in my tuna salad. So, Miss Judy, this is for you. These are Castle Vetrano olives. These are my favorite olives because they're bright green and they're buttery and they're meaty. They are so delicious and they work beautifully in the salad. You could use Kalamata, you could use green or black, but I highly suggest that you use Castle Vetrano. You can find them at any olive bar or you can buy them jarred. All right, rough chop. Now let's add our aromatic herbs. So we have fresh parsley, we have fresh dill, and we have a green onion. You always wanna set a little bit aside to sprinkle on top to garnish. It's a food styling tip from me to you. Next up, a green onion. Slice it down the middle. Next up, we'll add the Marcona almonds. And like I said, these are super crunchy in texture. I haven't really found a nut that has the exact texture of this, so I would say this is non-negotiable. Once again, I'm gonna set aside just a little bit to sprinkle on top. All right, let's... Let's give you a look so far. This is looking pretty good. So now I wanna add a little bit more acid to the salad to round out the flavor. So we're gonna add two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. We're gonna add two teaspoons of whole grain mustard. I like to use whole grain mustard because you can see the mustard in the recipe, and then that way you know what you're eating. You'll notice, if you look at the mixture, it's a little dry. We're gonna add vegan mayo. Now this is optional, but just to give it a little extra richness, I'm gonna add some cold pressed olive oil, just for flavor. Now another trick I'll say about the salad gets better in the fridge. Let it hang out and all the flavors develop together. Okay, now for the last ingredient, ripe avocado. This better not have a brown spot in it. If it does, I'm having a meltdown. I like to cut the avocado into fourths and then remove the skin. At this point in the salad, you should preheat the oven to about 400 because we're going to toast some bread. We want to cut the avocado into bite-sized chunks and then gently fold it into the salad, okay? What is that? Get that. There was a brown spot. So now we're gonna gently fold the avocado in.
See if we need to add anything. What I love about this salad is it's like a party in your mouth. And the more you chew, the more the flavor develops. You really get the dill popping through. You get the nice little bits of shallot. You get the underlying raw garlic, which is just enough. The avocado, creamy. Mm. The Marcona almonds though, that's what does it for me. It takes it over the top. Cause you get that crunch. You're gonna take your homemade baguette that you made earlier that morning and you're gonna cut it into sandwich slice pieces. <laughs> Carefully, you're gonna slice the baguette like this. We want to expose as much of the inside as possible because we're going to toast it. Not a lot, we just want to get it a little toasty. Toast it for about five minutes. Now you can transfer the chickpea salad to a pretty bowl. And like I said, you can serve this in cups of lettuce or with crackers. So when serving the salad in a bowl like this, I like to take the reserved ingredients. So that was the chopped parsley and the dill and some Marcona almonds. And I like to just sprinkle it on top. And our bread is toasted. You just want to toast it to where it has a nice crust on the outside, but you still want it soft because you're going to eat it as a sandwich. So if it's too toasted, it'll be really tough to eat. So for making the sandwiches, you can add sliced cucumber or sliced tomatoes. I have some cherry tomatoes, so I'm gonna add those. So we'll slice these in half. Now, I didn't say this wasn't gonna be messy, but let's give it a go. Mm. It's so satisfying. The salad is bright and refreshing and full of flavor. And on toasted bread, it's just, it's just one of my favorite sandwiches. It's, it's great for a picnic, great for a lunch, great for any time really. If you make this for someone, they're gonna be really happy.